Hello everyone, it's a Sunday morning and I'm going to meet Priya for an episode of Technology on the Move. So we're going to go in, have a quick cup of coffee and then go for a walk near a lake. Today we'll be talking about what it's like to be customer first while building global products. We'll also be talking about what it is to be a woman in tech. Thank you. Customer experience for Walmart.com. How does that work? It is when customers come uh, to search when they have something specific that they're looking for, or it might be their routine journeys, their weekly shopping that they do. So there's the search, there's what we, that's part of the discovery process and then there's all the way through you just finding, comparing, contrasting and ultimately buying what you want. Um, and there's a certain element of personalization that we add to the whole thing. So we know about our customer, we know their shopping habits, we know what they do offline when they visit the Walmart stores and when they come online, we use all of this to kind of personalize their experiences. So it's, it's all aspects of, you know, finding, helping you find exactly what you're looking for, helping you discover products that might be of interest to you. And it doesn't really uh, stop at the when you buy something. There's also the aspect of um, what we call post-purchase. So this might be you bought something and you decide you want to return it, right? So that's something that we call the post-purchase experience. Um, there is, you may have a question about turn policy and you might want to speak to our customer service. So that's again part of what we will enable as part of your uh, shopping experience. So it's, it's, it's more than just online. It's also this, um, you know, how do you go across online and the stores very seamlessly? So a journey might be something that you are looking to do very specifically. It might be your routine, weekly shopping list that you try to do. And there are times when you may have forgotten something. And that's where, again, the personalization comes in. And we help you build your baskets faster. We help you uh, accomplish what you're trying to do. So it's all about like this, you know, a really busy family. How do we help? you get through uh, and make shopping really a pleasurable experience for you. Building customer first products, what's the magic mantra? You know, there isn't a magic mantra. It's a lot of hard work that goes into uh, really knowing what your customers want. You know, I would say it's a lot about really understanding who your customer is. What are their preferences? Do they like coming into the store? Do they, what times of the day do they like to shop? Are they online shoppers? What specific brands do they like? So it starts with really understanding and anticipating their needs. And once you can do that, I think you can really build experiences that delight your customers. Um, so for Walmart, it's, it's all about really understanding this customer. And for us, for customers, it's, it's all about helping them save money so that they can live better. Right? So we use that as the mantra to guide all our experiences. And, and that's how we hope uh, to really delight our customers. What is the coolest products your team is working on currently? So this year has been about rebuilding a lot of our experiences. We've, we've we're reimagining, redefining how the search experience would look. Uh, we're redesigning our item page. But I think the the two products that really stand out for me are really how we've we've built a brand new help center for Walmart. And this is more than just a help center. I mean, help is not an afterthought. It's not a place that you go when you are in trouble. We're really trying to bring that upstream, trying to understand what is it that the customer might be uh, looking for and anticipating it ahead. Uh, so this, this new experience for the help center um, takes into account your past purchases and if you've just received something, it sort of figures out that your query might be related to that. So it uses a lot of intelligence. Um, a lot of machine learning has gone into it to kind of help us understand where the customer is in his or her journey and how uh, we can you know, tailor the, the help experience for them. So I think it's been really cool. It's just a start for us. We've just launched uh, recently uh, a lot of uh, ways before we can complete that experience. But I think it's been really cool to see that come from you know, what we have today. Um, another, another product that my team's working on that is the communications platform. 
So pretty much all the communication uh, for Walmart and all of uh, you know Sam's and Asda uh, go through this platform, the communications platform that we've built. And so this includes emails, SMSs, uh, push notifications. And what we're trying to do is really also build the next generation product here where we can um, really make sure the customer's getting the right information, the right time, the right channel. But we really look at this as an extension of the customer experience, which is why, you know, even though it's a smart comms platform, we're really looking to uh, treat this just as we would be customers visiting our website. So those mm. have been like in the recent uh, few months, I mean, I think the, the ones that really jump out. That's a lot of interesting work your team has done. Thank you, Sapna. Uh, you know, there's a lovely lake close by. Should we just go there and continue our conversation? Sure, let's go. So, Priya, we'll have some rapid fire questions now, okay? Sure. That sounds good. <laughs> so, what was your uh, dream job as a kid? As a kid, uh, I'm told when I was really little, my dream job was to be like an engine driver. So, what's the best and worst advice someone has given you? The best advice has been to just trust your gut and you know, things will take care of themselves. Uh, the worst advice that I've ever received is you know, to walk away from conflict. So, tell me about your, your secret talent that no one knows about. I don't know about a talent, but what I really enjoy doing is uh, I'm a bit of a fitness uh, freak and I love yoga. I've been doing yoga for a long time. I love crossword puzzles. So what makes you a good product manager? The ability to see the big picture uh, and then be able to execute on all these little details. Uh, for a product manager, I think the most important thing is, is passion. You know, having uh, a passion for what you do, passion to understand what problems are and how do you solve them longer term. What would you look for in a job applicant? The thing that I would look for is, is more of grit. You know, things are going to change, they're going to be ups and downs and what really, what one really needs is the ability to stay through. And what will always get them hired? What I do during the interview process is generally ask them uh, to explain uh, a situation at work in, previous, uh, in their previous roles. And it's about, you know, what is the most challenging thing that you've done or what is the most impactful thing. And, and I think, um, and what, what gets them hired is, is how they actually dealt with it. Like, how did they actually go about the process? Uh, what did they learn from it? So it's, it's really the learnings that come from whatever they did that, uh, that I would really look for. So Priya, you know the stats of man and woman at the workplace, mm -hmm. right? It's, um, nowhere is it equal. That's true. So, what are your thoughts on how do we retain women in uh, at the workplace? You know, I think it all starts with the company culture. Right? We need a culture that's uh, inclusive, that actually encourage, encourages diversity. Uh, so, I think it starts right there. How do we encourage women to um, uh, be themselves at work? And I think Walmart's been doing a great job with that. I think this is, you know, we've been really uh, going all out on trying to promote that inclusive spirit. So I think it's that, I think it's also um, the, the company policies being a lot more family friendly. And I think the third thing is really about uh, us actively, you know, at looking to develop talent, identifying talent and how do we get women um, uh, to, to stay. I mean, I think this is, women today probably expect a lot more from their careers than we ever did before, right? Yeah. And so it's, you know, how do you, how do you, uh, get them to find that harmony in work and, and, and in a family. So, uh, what is it like to be a woman leader in tech? I wish there were more women in technology. I think that is, if we, if we had more women, we'd have more role models for others. There'd be a, a network that we could learn from. Uh, I personally like to think that I don't have to do anything different being a woman in technology. I think our skills, our, our uh, strengths do let us actually do very well in technology. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, um, to me too. I think that technology is an evolving space constantly. Mm -hmm. There's so many real world problems to solve and space enough for both male and female. And that's true. <laughs> so uh, it's a great opportunity to come in and try to solve those problems. So Priya, what advice do you have for women who are aspiring for a career in STEM? 
I would say it starts way uh, before the career. It starts when they are looking at college. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about, I think STEM has this feeling of math and being intimidated by math. So uh, there's more to it than just math. And you know, I like to refer to it as STEAM with the arts included. Mm -hmm. I think what you really need today is being able to look at an opportunity or a problem from various lenses, math, engineering, psychology, behavioral sciences. Um, so I think that's when it starts, you know, that's to get them into the into the STEM fields. Uh, I think the problems are a little different once they are in STEM careers. And you work with a lot of engineers. Uh, and I would love to hear your thoughts on what does it take for women to really succeed in STEM careers? Sure. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, you should always keep your skills sharp, um, work hard and um, step up when you get an opportunity. Uh, take that opportunity head on and make something of it. This is a really beautiful and serene place uh, and it was such an interesting discussion. Thank you so much for having me Sapna, I really enjoyed it. And that's a wrap for this episode of Technology on the Move. There's much more to come, stay tuned. <laughs>